Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to um, today's uh, C19 Biz Booster uh, series, step number two, um, in regards to the series that we're uh, currently uh, presenting today. Uh, just a couple of things um, that we, just a few little housekeeping things that we've got uh, straight away. Number one, um, welcome. Uh, to today's event and thank you for taking the, your time out of your Friday afternoon to uh, to attend this afternoon's webinar. We're hoping that we were able to get a um, to get you guys unmuted if you've got any questions but if you do have any questions as we we go through today's uh, webinar please feel free to put them in the in the chat area um, because we're most happy to to answer them as we are actually presenting uh, today's webinar but other than that have fun learning and and understand that we're here to, to help you out today today's um webinar is all about creating your message so last week we we started off our series on on friday there to set the um the, the stepping stones in regards to what the series is going to be about and today it is all about creating uh, the message so i'm clinton Begg. i'm from cb5 management and clinton Begg consulting and the other uh, presenter today is uh Tenya Beg, who is from Impact uh, Impact Improvements. How are you going there, Tenya? Yep, you're just on mute there. Are you frozen? Looks like we've got a bit of an issue there. Hear me? Yep, yep, just a little bit uh, frozen at the moment, unfortunately. Have you got me there? No. No, I'm not. No, at our end here, you're looking. Can you hear me now? Yep, no worries at all. Yep, you're right, off you go. Okay, so just see if I can start sharing this screen. Okay, you can see that? Um, slowly coming up. <laughs> For bad IT connection issues. <clears throat> okay, get up now. No, not seeing it at our end just yet. It's just got that uh, you were sharing. This. Yep, we've got it now. Off we go. Got it. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good morning, if we have every, anyone in WA. Uh, like Clinton said today, I'm going to be talking to you about creating your message. So in essence, this is about starting the content. It's not going to be everything, but this is the basis, the kind of foundations. And they're also uh, the foundations uh, for your business as well. So we're going to be choosing and describing the values um, of your business before we then talk about creating your unique selling point or what used to be called your sustainable competitive advantage. So that's what I'm going to um, uh, go through today. And like I said, this is really the basis for the message that you want to deliver um, to the market. So first off, we're going to look at, you know, what is our purpose? So I like to call it our purpose or your purpose statement. It traditionally has been called your mission statement. So this is about understanding what your business does, who, who does it service, so who are its customers, why do they buy from you and what is the service area? So in essence, we all need to know what we're here for. What's the business here for? What is it doing? What's its purpose, essentially? And the uh, what your final purpose statement comes out to be can also form part of your elevator statement. So, you know, that opportunity you get when you get beside someone that you want to work with and they ask, well, what do you do? And this is how you easily rattle off um, what your business does and what it's there for. One thing about this too is that every member of your business should be able to explain this. Everyone should be able to uh, explain what your business does. And this is the basis for that. So how do you go about creating it? So simply a bit of a brain dump to start with. Start thinking about, well, what does the business do? Maybe more of a high level. You know, don't go into the detail. It's not going to be a shopping list. It's about that um, you know, it's high level statement about what you do. So if we take a look at some examples. So here's one here. You know, the, the purpose of this business was to use current media trends and online statistical monitoring. We specialize in marketing and management strategies to develop a competitive edge for individuals, enterprises, and events of all sizes across Australia. So you can see that they are stating there what the business does, you know, who it services, um, and the service area. There's also a little bit of, you know, why they buy from you in there as well, because, you know, we specialise in this and, you know, in marketing and 
management strategies. Um, and they're also saying, you know, it's also for individual, you know, where or are. Um, and also it's saying, you know, we work across, you know, with events across all sizes across Australia. So that's telling you the region. For some people, it can be smaller. It just depends on, on your business and where you want and where your market is going to currently. I'll give you another example here. So totally different uh, business altogether. Uh, so this, was a, this is a dental business. So their purpose, we specialize in delivering dental services, providing individualized personal experience to our clients, attracting a range of individuals to entire families from the Mackay community and surrounding region. So you can see there, they're telling you what they do, it's dental services. They provide that individualized personal experience to their clients. So that's why people buy from them. Um, but they're also saying, you know, we have individuals who come, you know, who come and take our services, but we also have entire families. And finally, the region is the Mackay community and surrounding region. So you can see um, that they're being very specific about who they are catering to at this current time. You might have noticed I'm saying at this current time, because what I have seen um, a number of times over the years is people will show me their mission statement if they have one, and it will say things like, we will be, or we aim to be. Now that is really future focused. It's not the here and now. And really, I would be saying to them, this sounds like this is your vision. This is what you're aiming for. This is what you want to achieve. This is where you want to be in three years time. Um, so be very, um, very careful, um, really aware of how you word your statement when you put it together, because it needs to be about the here and now, present tense, not future tense. Okay, so that's our purpose. That is one of the very foundational principles that any business, even teams should have, so that we all know what we're here for and, and what our, our business and our team is supposed to be doing. So now let's look at the values. So um, these values, they also form part of the foundations um, of any business, but obviously they, they form part of your marketing and your digital strategy. So, and why do we have them here? Well, as you can see by that question, it's saying what values are important in your business dealings with your employees, your customers, your suppliers, and the general public. The values um, work through your business in a number of ways, but as we're looking at it like this, it is those values and behaviours that are really important for you in how you and your employees interact, not only with each other, but also with those um, other elements that I've listed there. So how we interact with your customers, how we interact with our suppliers, and also how we interact with the general public. Anyone that we come into, especially when we're, you know, wearing that logo and behaviors is really important. Um, I will, I myself put my values in my proposals. I also discuss them with my clients before we engage so that we're both on the same page about, you know, what behaviors are important in our interactions with each other. Um, the other thing about these values is that they also should form the basis for decision making that you may be having, that you may be having a difficult time making a decision about something, these are always what you come back to each time. Now, how do we define what our values are? Now, if you're a sole trader, you're the only person in your business, it will be a simpler process because it's just about you. So I often give to my clients a list. So I've got an A4 page that has a list of varied values on there that people choose from. No more than you know five, you can possibly go to six, but that can start to become pretty onerous, but having five is a good number. Um, the other side around this, once you've picked your five, is that um, you need to have descriptions for them. You can, have, you can have these words, you know, honesty, integrity, respect, those sorts of things, but really we need to have some descriptions behind them to you know, define exactly what this looks like. What are the behaviours we're going to see um, if these values are being demonstrated and lived in our business? 
there's something that I um, did neglect to say when I said about, you know, creating and defining what your values are. If you do have um, employees, you do have a team, I would be asking them to put forward what they believe you know, the values of the business are as well. And then it should be a process of elimination. So if you do come up with all the same, that's really easy. Um, but if you come up with multiple um, versions, say, say you've got maybe a list of six or seven, maybe then get everyone to choose really their top two or top three from that overall list. So it brings it right down to where you all are on the same page about the values and behaviours that are important. So let's take a look at some examples for you. So very simple ones. So something like teamwork. A lot of people will have this in their work, in their values. Uh, so you can see the simple wording there. We're committed to respecting and supporting fellow teammates, their decisions and point of view. Uh, work ethic, we will lead by example, by ensuring a high level of ongoing commitment to delivering success. And that all, in, I think I've got another one on there, yes, I do. Another all important one, that customer focus. So our dealings with customers are built on establishing long-term trust and delivering high quality service. Now, you know, like I said before, having these descriptors is really important. And the reason being is that you actually want to be able to determine whether we are living these or not. Are we demonstrating these behaviours or not? Um, the other thing around these, the values is that, like I said before, they flow through your business in a number of ways. How you recruit people, performance discussions, performance reviews, um, and they will flow through in a number of different ways. Now, I some people do put their values uh, on their website as part of their digital strategy. Sometimes they utilise them in other ways um, through Facebook posts and what have you. So it's really important to get these right. Um, the other thing about the values too is that if you do decide to put these on your website or if you maybe get someone else, you know, you've got someone else designing your website for you, um, I would encourage you to, you know, be really firm on keeping the wording the same because if you're seeing um, to be doing something different from what's on there or if you've got these posted up on a wall somewhere in your office or your um, business, then they're going to see the disconnect and that won't be sending a consistent message uh, in your marketing. So just be care very careful about that. I've seen it happen before where a business, they, you know, they had decided what their values were, they had the descriptors, and then the next thing you see, there's other, these other things added in that were really um, mixing up the message. And that were also were things that weren't really values or kind of principle-based things. So they are they're two different things. So that's our values. Last but not least, your unique selling point. So this is a really another piece of an important part of the puzzle. Um, so what sets you apart from your competition? your business uh, in preference to your competitors uh, and sometimes it can be difficult to define especially if we're doing very similar things to someone else but there's always going to be something that sets your business apart from your competitors and, and the same for them and it's going to attract different people for different reasons so again similarly to what you do with your purpose statement it's sitting down dumping those thoughts around well, what is different about us what is unique about us what is it that attracts our customers and sometimes again what we talked about last week it's valuable to talk to not only your employees but some of your um, possibly long-term clients and customers about why they have stayed with you uh, and keep Turning, um, to have business with you there can be some you know uh, sometimes obviously we are our harshest critics so these are really positive things about your business what you do well it may be about your service delivery uh, it may be about you know time frames and going the extra mile those different things so again it's about getting that information down and uh, putting it into a statement something I will say before I show you some examples um, is that 
next, next time we're together, we're going to talk about the competitive review and we're also going to talk about a SWOT, so your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and the threats. Those two different activities can actually have an impact or uh, influence what goes into your unique selling point. So, so bear that in mind. So I'm just going to show you some examples now. So this is following on from um, the two purpose statement examples I showed you before, so for the same businesses. So you can see here they're saying we specialise in designing marketing and management plans, targeting the specific market needs of our clients. So they're being very specific about this is who we're looking after, what is very specific to our clients. And then they start to talk about while well, providing personable one-on-one -on -one service through ongoing engagement. Some people really, some clients, customers really want that stuff. So that's what's different about this business. And they're also providing updates on market coverage and up-to-date statistics. That was something that was unique to them that they were sharing with their clients at the time. And back to uh, our, our dental business, um, you can see that she's saying our professional staff specialise in providing a boutique, personalised and thorough service to our clients in our welcoming premises. So it's all these, you know, you might say they're very soft, possibly fluffy words, but they're things that are going to attract people. The boutique, it's personalised, it's welcoming. Um, and I can tell you that um, I've been to this dental service and it actually is exactly what that is saying. You know, our unique style of service ensures that customers keep returning to us for their dental care. Our centres there, especially they refer our service to others. That's because that's what was happening. They were getting a lot of clients by referral because of um, the service that they delivered. Okay, so one um, final word about all of these statements, so your purpose statement, your values, uh, and your unique selling point. Everyone in your business should be able to share these statements with anyone they come into contact with when they're representing your business and even when they're not representing your business, even in their personal time. So be very, um, um, it's, so you need to share that with your employees and all the better when they're involved in creating them. Uh, and like I said before, be, um, you know, be very careful about how much you change when you put it into your digital strategy, if you change it at all, um, because you don't want to lose the essence um, of the message that you're trying to deliver. Over to you, Clinton. Very good, thanks for that. We, we did have some slight lag now and then, but we ended up getting through that, so that, that's uh, really, really quite good. Um, based on um, what uh, Tenga was just saying there, and, and I'm just going to follow on from um, quite a few of the key points uh, that Tenga was actually talking about there. And last week when we had our first step, <clears throat> we talked about the planning aspect and, and the need for, for business planning uh, internally and also externally for your, for your digital and your uh, digital marketing, for example. One of the things I spoke about there um, last week um, was about the what platforms do you actually use in the digital space? So once you actually set up your, um, you know, set up your your plans and your strategy in regards to which way you want to take your business, for example, it really is important to make sure that we're we're engaged with the digital platforms that suits our business, or what is it that our, actually our, our business does, and what is our business wanting to achieve? So that that is ultimately very very important myriad of platforms out there and again reflective back to last week you know eight eight years ago i would have been saying to many business owners be on as many platforms as you possibly can uh, now we we really do head people towards and business owners towards the fact that if you're going to engage in, in say social media utilize that platform and utilize it very well keep that uh, brand messaging i think what ting was just saying there towards the the tail end of her presentation your brand messaging which leads to your brand language making sure that's consistent so the platform that you use if it's social media for example so we're looking at the social media space here with facebook instagram um, you know linkedin snapchat twitter for example they're just to name a few making sure that they're actually relevant to your business and actually making sure that you're going to keep currency with those tools they're actually using. How are they going to drive your business forward as part of your, as part of your, as part of your plan? 
in there as well. I've also placed it, that's in the social media space, but also in the digital space, meaning um, Google My Business. It might be might be WhatsApp. It could be having a Shopify um, store uh, within your uh, within your website, for example, depending on what the purpose of your business is and what you're wanting to achieve, and making sure that we're that we're well engaged in in the world wide web. So that that is uh, is something to be very mindful of. If we're going to engage in digital and it's part of our our, our business plan or our, or our strategy, make sure it's relevant to our business. Make sure that we're going to engage with that particular platform, be it social media, and make sure that we're going to cons uh, consistently engage it well. Um, more often than not, I would say, if you don't engage it, don't have it. Because it's not really good brand representation for who you are and what you're trying to achieve, okay? <clears throat> Understanding who your customers are. I think what Tengi just mentioned there before about who are our customers? Um, and that is probably something that um, does come with a fair bit of technique and does come with a fair bit of planning. Um, in depending on what industry you are, your target audience might be, um, you know, 16 to 100 year olds, uh, or your target audience might be mum and dads. It's about understanding who your, your customers are. And a lot of that comes from the, the, the planning process for your business. Who are we actually looking at selling our product and services to? Who are we looking at selling our product and services to? So understanding who your customers are and that evolves and is very much developed uh, as part of your, your business plan and how you develop that business plan, for example, and your strategy. With digital, and I, I mean, I, I love this bit, with digital, when you're actually uh, adopting your, your plan, for example, you get to see the insights. You get to see um, the statistics, real-time data, um, real-time evidence in regards to who your audience may well be. Um, there are many ways in which you can actually establish that. So, for example, if we had Facebook as a platform, we can look at Facebook insights, you know. So we can actually see... Uh, who our current audience is, okay? Who our current audience is, uh, how old they are, their uh, male or female, uh, where they reside, for example. And a really good example of that is this type of information here. Now, when you build a, a, a business plan or a business plan uh, platform, um, we can integrate many different evidential tools into what we do. This particular platform here, for example, is called Scythe. And Scythe um, is, a, is a data collection tool that allows us to know, for example, in this case, how a Facebook page is actually performing. So we can see by this information here, uh, with our, um, once we've actually integrated uh, Facebook into our business, we can see what its reach are, how many people have seen uh, seen our um, social media through through Facebook. How many people have been engaged with us? How many people have clicked links in our Facebook, whether it be like a website link, for example, or a message link. So this information here and data that you you will have when you choose the platform that you want to utilize for your business moving forward is critical. You know, down here, for example, the information that you get, age groups, who your target age groups. Uh, if you're wanting to sell a, uh, a, uh, a BMX bike, you know, you'd probably be wanting to try and, and not being discriminatory at all, but you'd be wanting to try and sell it to a, a much younger age group. If it's a Melbourne star, you might want to be trying to sell it to a older age group because they'll know exactly what it is. And if you don't know what a Melbourne star is, go on and Google it. But um, it's important to understand what those age groups and what those age brackets are. So it's, it's critical to understand, if I take the screen back, to here, it's critical to understand who your customers are, but also it's, and I'll mention it very shortly, um, who your customers could be. So who your current customers, who your current market are, is, or could be. And I think, um, as I mentioned there just before about what Tanya said about that consistency of that messaging, you know, whether it be in the digital space, and making sure that consistency of message, messaging in regards to your business uh, at ground level for foot traffic is the same. It's speaking that same language. This is the look and feel of our business. This is how we present it, e.g. The, the, uh, the, uh, the dentist 
uh, example. Buying from you, how will customers purchase from you? So when you go through and, and do, your, uh, do your planning and your, your business planning, how are they going to purchase a product or a service from you? Now, in many, many ways, shapes or form, I know that we might say here, for example, it, that slide comes up, that's the one that's gonna come up. Um, it may well be whether it is a uh, foot traffic who actually comes through you through foot traffic, or it might actually be online. So even online here, we're having a few technical issues. But it might be in person, it might be only online, it might be both. So those, can you can't see those videos there, Tanya, on the screen? No, unfortunately. One of them was oh, that no, no. shopping, uh, pushing a trolley, which is someone who's going to be utilising his foot traffic, and the other one was actually using a credit card online. So unfortunately, we've got a bit of a lag there with the Zoom. But you, you, get, the, you get the reasoning. You know, you might have a shop front, how do we attract people to go into the shop? How do we get them to come into your shop? It might be traditional marketing, but it might be um, it might be completely focused on digital marketing. Okay, or if they're going to buy online, is the online experience going to be a pleasurable and easy experience being able to purchase from you online? So unfortunately, you've got two blank screens there at the moment. Didn't play, but understanding how people are going to be buying from you, an interaction. In the in the first uh, in the first um, step that we did last week, I talked a, a fair bit about the interaction, how people want to interact with you, and why they want to buy from you. Why would they want to buy from you? And part of that, a lot of times, is interaction. I like it when I do a lot of digital workshops in person. You got a room full of people, and you you, you sit there and go, and you ask the question: Would you allow? your telephone to ring in your in your shop front? Would you just allow it to ring out? And of course you wouldn't. And the same scenario online. So if you choose to uh, if you choose to be on Facebook with your business or if you choose to be on, on Instagram with your business, um, you know, people are wanting to interact with you. They'll reach out to you. Uh, and a lot of times now obviously with Facebook and, and Instagram, it is through Messenger. People will want to interact with you through Messenger. They, they want to know information about product or services. They may well want to buy from you. They may well want to book with you. But it is so critical that you understand that if you go into the social media space, that you're utilising the Messenger platform for, as an interaction tool, as a lead generating tool, as a sales interaction tool. And the same can be said with Messenger and dropping Messenger into a, a website as well. So people being able to message you straight from your website to the Messenger platform. Interaction, 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 interaction. How are you actually going to set that up? How is your brand language and your brand consistency going to be transferred into the, uh, into the Messenger space? And how you're actually going to be able to uh, undertake an interaction which may well be the lead, then goes to the sale, then so and then the closure of that sale, and it all happens online. Just remember that you wouldn't leave your phone ring out in your shop if it's say if you've got a shop front, for example. You always want to have that that interaction ability. Tanya did talk about it quite a bit. I was, I've retouched on it again about um, brand reach and understanding um, where we want our, our brand to be positioned in the market. And a lot of that comes down to planning. You know, it scares me quite a bit sometimes when you see businesses where they're like, oh, we want to we want to grow our business. But they haven't actually got those stepping stones in place, those plans in place, those strategies in place, because yes, it might work now, and they might grow, but are their digital tools, are their marketing tools online going to be able to um, cope with, with a capacity increase? How are they actually going to strategize to make sure that that user-friendly experience and that actual uh, interaction is consistent? Okay, so that brand reach may well be in um, what area you service. You know, if you're in, in, um, in Western Australia, for example, uh, you might uh, have the ability to just uh, service um, 
in the uh, in the Perth area, in the direct area. Or if you're in Brisbane, for example, you may well want to be able to have the ability to, to just service the Brisbane area. But you might also want to be able to service your whole state, the whole country, or you might also want to be able to uh, export or sell overseas as well. May have lost tenure there. So you need to understand, obviously, number one, where is your selling space? And that's part of that, that business development, that business planning uh, as well. So part of that business planning as well. So understanding where is my marketplace? Where is my selling uh, space? Sometimes people don't realize that they've got the ability to sell outside of their immediate area. They become a little bit shop blind and they think, oh no, I can only sell in my immediate area. Well, obviously with digital and, and planning your digital well and your strategy well, you can open yourself up to an Australia-wide market. You can open yourself up to a new audience, a new audience to be able to interact with you in able to create a lead and then go into a sale. So your um, understanding of your selling point might just be Australia, okay? But it also might be outside of Australia. So again, depending in regards to how you you build your strategy, how you build your business plan, uh, how you build your digital strategy. Are you going to be able to cater for being able to sell a product or a service uh, outside of your immediate country? There's a lot of things that come along with that as well. So that is something that um, takes that extra planning, takes that extra knowledge, takes that uh, uh, extra ability to execute it well. Okay. So you know, I, I've worked with businesses in townships that have got less than 500 people in them. And they are literally selling from a remote region. Hopefully they don't have as many Zoom meeting issues as or, or, or connectivity issues as what we do, which is another thing that you, you've got to possibly cater for depending on where you're located in the country. Um, but, you know, they're in a remote area, but they're selling outside of the country. They're selling overseas. So you can, if you've got connectivity, you can you can sell your product or service and also your, your vision anyway. So that is of importance to understand. So yeah, where is your selling market? Is it is it in your immediate space where you are? Do you have the ability to sell um, throughout your state, cross states or whole of Australia? Or is your selling space potentially outside of Australia? And if your selling space is outside of Australia, is the brand language that you have developed for an Australian audience going to be received the same in a, in a different country and understanding that, that process, okay? So that is, that is of importance as well. We lost you there for a minute, Tanya. Yep, you're still muted there at the moment. Hard to lose yeah, no, that's fair enough. Part of what we, we look at as well is enjoying the process. You know, um, when we go back to that first slide that I had with all the different types of social media platforms and, and the possible digital, I haven't really even gone into, say, Google and Google My Business, which I, I feel is just the, like the number one platform going alongside Messenger. Um, you know, it's about understanding why you need to integrate these um, these digital assets, whether it be social media or search engines, you know, um, you know, into your business and how they're going to benefit your business, but how they can potentially uh, impact your business through through growth and having that ability to be to be ready for it. Um, the other thing I'll do actually say about enjoying the process is that. You know, when you, and I, I did mention next week, and sorry to put a bit of a Dow point on the, the conversation and the webinar here today, but when you're actually going through and experiencing recessionary activity, um, more and more people, um, yeah, more and more people um, are actually um, more selective with their, with their selling. And so Walt, Walt Darwin has had to leave the presentation, that's okay. So people are more and more attuned to how they actually spend their money. Okay, so making sure that you've got that clear brand language and that consistency and, and basically having the ability to be found and having the ability to be interacted with is more important than ever, especially in this type of environment that we are currently working in. Okay, 
So that's just a little bit of my um, my presentation there today in regards to that next step. And I suppose, um, Tanya, we've uh, we've got a few people online here, and it's been recorded today and and, and uh, live fed. Um, just going back to what you uh, your presentation um, just before, like what are, why is it so important to make sure that your your team members have that understanding? Or you, I think you mentioned there. Did you mention about it's important to let your team have input with you as well? Right, you are frozen there a bit again. No, it looks like we may have lost any there. Have we still got you there, Tanya? Oh, definitely. De yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. I can hear you. Just froze on the screen there a little bit, but I can hear you okay. Off you go. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. It is most important that you include your employees in the process if you have them. Um, because it creates their buy-in, you know, they're engaged, they're part of it. Um, you know, I've worked in businesses where, you know, we treated that business like our own yep. because we were part of this process and they're having a say. Um, and it's important because down the track, those, those things will, you know, meld you together, especially during the challenging times. Yep. But, you know, they have contributed to it and they are part and parcel of it. So, um, you know, as much buy-in as you can get because um, they have to, you have to achieve through these people and they need to be, have a clear understanding of, you know, what we're here for, how we're going to do it um, and, and why we should, our customers should come to us and more. Mm. And being the, the an opportunist as I as I am, when you were actually saying that, I'm thinking to myself, by having the um, your team members buy in, you know things like upsell opportunities and and knowing how they target trends in their in their business as well to you know possibly understand to be ahead of the game when you might need more products or you might need more mm -hmm. more, for example. But what are some of the common mistakes that are actually made in the in this second step that you you talked about today? Yeah, um, like I like I did mention, and it's maybe it's it's me. It's a little bugbear about how the grammar is used, but I've I've seen it used multiple times where purpose statements are actually their vision statement. So it's not delivering the right message because it's talking about where you want to be, not where you currently are and what you're currently doing. Um, I've also seen I've also seen values. Um, where they're just words, they've just got a word. Yep. There's no description about what it is, what it looks like. Um, and then you wonder why everyone's doing things differently. So, um, and the interactions with customers and suppliers aren't uh, what a word actually looks like in behaviour. 100%. One of the things you actually mentioned there as well is about the fact that, it, uh, and, and I was, you know, in, in my clip there about the, uh, I suppose the, the brand language and that and that consistency. Um, you know, it's it's really interesting because I know that in uh, in the digital space, for example, if it's the social media um, side of things attached with digital, you know, some people go, oh, well, this put this post out for the sake of putting that post out, and there, there's no. Mm -hmm. Or there, there's no mindset and there's no strategy behind it. And um, again, as I mentioned in step one last week, as part of the introduction, you know, having that minimal ability to have a part of your, your business plan and your, and, your, and your objective and your brain language um, and your market positioning through, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that we have a minimum of three social media posts a week, a minimum, a minimum. Yeah. Uh, that all mm -hmm. comes it comes down to planning. Just with the um, the the step two planning as well. Like you, you gave the example of the dentist as part of your um, unique selling points. Are you still got me there? Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. Still. I do. Okay. I do. Yeah, as part of your, uh, yeah. your selling points, for example, you, you you gave the example of a dentist, and you said that. Oh, yeah. that. Can you just explain how it's transferable from? online to that in-person interaction? What are some key things out of that? Um, I missed some of your questions. So so what was it about the unique selling point? Yeah, so about can, how that transpires. Yeah, how that transpires from being online to in-person. Well, I, I think um, 
I know from the first time I walked into that business, it had a different feel about it. Yep. And that might sound a little bit airy fairy, mm-hmm. but you could you could tell um, you know the way that the um, assistants you know how they greeted you, how they um, you know every the whole process um, was very personable, very unique. I don't reckon I've ever experienced that in a dental surgery before because I wasn't didn't really like going to dental surgeries um, but they were doing, were saying um, they were delivering it um, and in every way and there are all the even the way um, the colorings in the um, you know the waiting room when you go into the actual surgery itself um, mm-hmm. The theme has flown all the way through. And, I mean, they really are a boutique business in the way that they deliver. So um, they have made sure that they have, you know, stuck to that, um, what their unique selling point says, and they've continued to deliver that. And, and I'll be, they have continued to grow, actually, over the last few years uh, and, and are doing very well. Oh, that's excellent to hear. If you would like to ask a question, you can unmute yourself and, and ask the question if you like. You're, you're quite welcome to ask the question as we, we're talking. It's more uh, when uh, we do these type of webinars, and especially when, you know when I do webinars, I, I know I like to have the um, you know people that have the ability to to unmute themselves and be able to ask questions as we go because I think that's in, important that you you do have um, that ability to do it. I think that um, so. Do we have any questions from online there at this point in time? You can unmute yourself and ask a question if you wish. No, not just yet. No. no, that's all good. I think that um, about two months ago, uh, I actually did a uh, a nationwide webinar, and it was um, one of the things I actually mentioned uh, was about the fact that you know I I treat a small business, you know, very much like a, a corporate business in regards to how we start those those steps. And yes, there's many variables. It might come down to how much money that business has and uh, how many people they have, for example, um, you know, what their vision is, whether it's Australia-wide, worldwide, et cetera. And, and that, that's obviously very, very important. But when you're, you, that, that doesn't matter how big a business is when, when you, you start in that, that process. No, not at all. And um, I believe that all businesses need to have these basic foundational statements for themselves. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually did, um, only recently I was interacting. Sorry? No, you're right. Off you go. Got me. Um, only recently I was interacting with a smaller business um, and, and the owner, the business owner was struggling with, why do I need to have these statements? I don't see the reason for having them, um, yep. don't know. And, we, and look, what I will say too is that his digital strategy was a little bit all over the shop, um, yep. haphazard and wasn't delivering a consistent message. And it was bringing it back to that for him. You know, you need to be able to demonstrate who you are, what you do and why, you know, clients should, or customers should come to you. Um, oh. But also getting that different messaging out to different people. So no, the there is no limit to the size of the business. I mean, I'm, I'm the only person in my business, but I've got all of these statements, you know, like yeah. I said, I use them all the time. So when, when you, you do work with business, for example, do you, do you come across the quite often when we're looking at unique selling points? Like, you know, do you find that businesses are a little bit hesitant to, to look over the, the fence and see what their competitors' unique selling points are? Hmm. Yeah, look, um, I do. And to be quite honest, I've changed that a little bit in the way, well, actually I've changed it quite a lot in the way I do that activity now with the business when we're looking at the competitor review. Um, I ask them just to think of their top three, you know, who, you know, who they look at as, you know, these are the people that could take the market share from me. But we're doing it in a respectful way. And a lot of the time, we're not naming who the competitor is. Um, and um, you know, there is a hesitance. And then sometimes, it's all, I've got some that we think, well, we're aware of what they're doing. And that's okay. Let's, but we have, it's about focusing on what we do. 
Yeah. Okay. So it still has a place, um, especially if we're lacking in some areas that we need to work on. Not a problem at all. Okay, look, we, we don't have any uh, any further questions from online at this uh, point in time. So again, if you if you did have any uh, any uh, questions for Tenga or uh, you can visit Tenga at www.impactimprovements.com.au. Correct. Uh, if you do have any questions for me, for example, as well, you can also uh, reach out to me at www.clittenbeck.com. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the presentation, the webinar today. Um, step three is next week, Tanya. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, very good. Yes, it is. You got me? Yep, got you mm -hmm. there. Hey, apologies for any slight lag that we may have had with the Zoom link today. It's uh, connectivity, you know, it's one of those things that we, we, we still need to obviously improve on. But again, if you have any questions by means, please reach out to either Tanya or myself. Thank you for coming today, Tanya. Thank you for presenting today. And hopefully we get to see yeah. you all next week. Thank, thank you. you.